Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. So just got here to look at a Ford Transit Connect and it's got a DPF error. So we're gonna get inside and have a look. Okay, so inside the van here we have exhaust filter over limit, service now, all of these lights here, spanners, engine lights. It looks like an ad blue smoke symbol down there. It's done 30,000 miles. So for this one, I think I'm gonna use the Launch MOT4 from Launch UK. Set up diagnosis. So we'll search for Ford Europe. Do an automatic search. Okay, it's a one point five trying to connect. Do a health report. So while that's going through, I'll talk about some of the issues these vans can have. They can have a block DPF, and they can have a cause of the DPF blockage, which is very common, which is the pipe that leads to the throttle body um, up there. Uh, it's a small piece of rubber pipe. The other fault that they can have is. A P2002 code, which is DPF failure. Uh, we can do a quick test for that right now. So if we come to the back of the van here and we look at the exhaust pipe, if we can see a lot of black soot, and especially if we rub our finger, we've got more of a white and blue residue on this one. So that would give you a good indication if the DPF is damaged or not. If you've got black soot on there. Okay, so while we're having a chat there, if uh, diagnostic is finished and it looks like yeah we have the correlation between the airflow of the map sensor and um, so that's going to be more than likely that holes I talked about earlier on and then we've got a particle restriction so once you trigger off the airflow uh, fault the, the van then disables the particulate filter cleaning and it blocks up so we'll go in here and we'll go to data stream now we're going to take off the inlet pressure for the DPF and we'll look for another item if we can, soot. Uh, we've got loads of different ones there. Just click on a few of them. 220% soot loading on the DPF. We've got a pressure within the DPF of jumping around from sort of 30 to 50 millibars, 52. These are probably some of the only engines that actually do that. In most cars you'll have a steady pressure, but these ones do do that. That is quite normal on these to uh, jump around quite a bit like that. The sensor is on a very short hose, which is very close to the DPF, so it doesn't um, get a, a very solid reading. So that's why it jumps around. All right, so it's gonna need a DPF clean and it's gonna need the airflow looking at. Okay, so where it usually leaks from is this tube over here. So if you rub your finger on it, you should see oil residue. That's a good sign that it's leaking. Now we can put a smoke test on there to show you, uh, but we're pretty sure that that's where, where it's coming from. But I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll put a smoke test on it just to show you what I mean. Now if I open this tube here, we can connect up a smoke test and then we can show you where the smoke is coming from. So this is the machine I'm going to use from Launch UK. I'm going to switch it on. And we can insert this down in here. Just seal it off. And we just confirm we have smoke coming. And we'll just connect that back up. Okay, now after a minute or so you can see that we have smoke coming from there so you're going to be losing all of your boost pressure from there which is causing all of the problems that he's got today very very common issue we've changed dozens and dozens of these now i don't have one in the van so i'm gonna to have to get my cowboy hat out i haven't got it here with me but we're gonna to have to do a little bit of a cowboy repair temporarily until we can get hold of one of these from ford so we're just going to close this back up now we're finished with the smoke test confirming where the smoke's coming from 
So I'm just going to open these 7mm Jubilee clips here that hold the pipe together. Got another bolt down there that I've just removed a 10mm one down there. It just holds it in a clamp. We'll get these hoses off here. Give it a little bit of a twist. And off it comes. Now we just need to get the other side out, which is just in there. Again, we need to just get in there and open that clip. Okay, now we've got that out and we turn it over. You can see there where the split is at the bottom side. Nice and oily. So first I'm just gonna remove the oil from the tube. Just give it a bit of a spray down. Once you finish spraying, it shouldn't take more than a few seconds, we should see that dry up and get rid of that oil. So, a little bit of a cowboy repair here I'm going to do. This stuff, probably the best glue I've ever seen. It fixes these split tubes on a lot of cars. Obviously I'm a mobile mechanic so we do have to do some temporary stuff sometimes. Of course the best option to do is replace these holes, but we can't get hold of that for at least a few days. So. I'll use a bit of this and this does hold I've used it dozens of times on these same repairs before and it'll hold until we can get a replacement pipe you can buy that in tool station ever build industrial grade super glue now while we're waiting for that to dry shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes anyway but we'll carry on getting some DPF cleaner now into the DPF itself down here so just down here we can remove the clip and I've dropped my pliers so we've got that clip removed there and then we use the same pliers just to dislocate the tube there from the sensor so that's the DPF pressure sensor down there okay so I've got my compressor hooked up at 130 psi I'm gonna lose, use the launch UK DPF gun with the launch UK DPF cleaning fluid and we have attached this hole to that sensor or the holes that I've removed in there, sorry. We're just going to put some of the cleaning fluid in there now. We'll do about half of the bottle and then we'll do the rest with the engine running. Okay, now we've got the engine running. We're going to put the rest of the fluid in. It's got a really annoying rattle there from that plastic. Gonna hold the trigger on this now and we'll get the rest of the fluid in with the engine running. Okay, so I've removed the cleaning gun, connected back the hose to the sensor down there. So I'll just quickly try and stop this rattle here as well if I can. Get a cable tie down here. See if we can shut this up. Now we'll get back in here, we're going to hold the revs up to 3000 RPM. We'll hold the revs there for somewhere between 2 to 4 minutes. And then we'll keep an eye on the DPF pressure there. I think we've gone a little bit above the 3000 mark, so come back down a little bit. These would normally sit around 40 or 50 millibars here at these sort of revs. And that idle we should be seeing anywhere between sort of 3 millibars up to sort of 12. Now while this is happening we're going to get vapour coming from the exhaust. Now 
if we come back out of the pressure we can see that the percentages of the DPF there is coming down see the soot mass is coming down and the inferred soot loading Ok now the pressure has come down where we want it, we're going to go to the service function on here We're just going to reset everything And then we can reset the particle filter learn values Now we just need to wait for that to power down Ok so that's complete Now we can go back and clear the fault codes. So now at 3000 RPM we have around 45 millibars of pressure. Soot loading is coming down, we're on 22% so far. Now it's down to 21. Grams of soot there, 1.6. And the fault codes have been cleared. That's it, we're all finished on the Ford Transit Connect. See you on our next video.